Okay, let's get started with this uh, lecture. This is the second of the B3 lectures, talking about examining categorical data. In this case, um, we're going to be talking about bar charts. Bar charts, by the way, charts, plots, graphs, as far as I know, those are essentially identical terms. They mean the same thing. You haven't seen this before, right? Let's move on. Here's an important rule. No treating categories as if they were numerical. You can't take categorical data and pretend like it's numerical, which means you can't pretend like uh, differences are ordered if they're not ordered. For ordered differences, you can't imply that the between category gaps are regular if they're not. So you can't suggest there's a continuum where there isn't one. If anything you learn in this class is described as something you use with numerical data, then don't use it with categorical data in general. That's important, which means you have to tell the two types apart. Bar charts are pretty common, but you can do cool things with them. You're probably sick of them from all the presentations that you've done in your college career so far, but they're pretty important. Bar charts are a way to represent one or more categorical variables, and they are based directly on contingency tables. In fact, in R and some other software, the way you make a bar chart is with a function that works on a table. So first you create a table a frequency table or something, and then you do a bar plot on the frequency table, and that's how you make your bar plot. A bar chart is based directly from a contingency table. The height of each bar is the frequency of observations in the category, so bar charts are just about counting things. That's how you can have a graph of something categorical. Otherwise, you'd say, if you're thinking about it, Graphs have like quantitative stuff in them. How do you do that? Well, you count things. You count these non-quantitative categories and kind of create a quantitative thing out of that. So for one example, let's look at survival rates on the Titanic. This is actually a standard data set in R, but I don't really recommend you follow along because it's formatted very confusingly. It's not in a nice matrix. You have to mess with it a bit. So let's look at one question. A single variable. Let's look at a bar chart representing one variable. They can have any number of categories. You could have 5 or 6 or 12 or 100 bars. But in this case, we have two bars. Did you survive, yes or no? It was not a good thing to go on the Titanic. So it looks like you had slightly greater odds of dying than surviving. Looks like it's slightly more than a 2 to 1 ratio there of death. But with bar charts, we can get much more interesting in this. Actually, let's look at one thing here. The height of each bar represents the number of individuals, but sometimes people change this to percentage, which can be very useful. Also, look at this gap here. There's a gap between the bars, and that's one of the ways we know this is representing categorical data, not numerical data. If it's numerical data on the x-axis, we smush the bars together to indicate that. Let's look at two variables at once. Now, this only works if you have paired data. Now we can use a stacked bar chart to represent two variables collected with paired data, meaning that each subject or individual provided two values. So you can't take uh, some people on the uh, Titanic and then some people on the Lusitania and throw them all together and do stacked bar charts necessarily. You know, not this way. But if you have paired data, just two things measured about all the people on the Titanic, then you can do a stacked bar chart. And this is basically a two-way table. It's a contingency table. It's a way of organizing things. When you stack the bars, it's very easy to see the subgroups in each group of cases. It's kind of like doing row and column percents. Actually, it's exactly like that. The disadvantage is it can be very difficult to compare the individual blocks within each bar since they don't all start at the bottom. So we'll see that. Let's look at a, a Titanic example of survival by sex. So one variable is, did you survive? Another variable is, what was your sex? So you can see here um, that there weren't very many women on the Titanic. Look at that. There were around 500 women, but there were in excess of 1,500. Oh, disappointed this graph didn't go up high enough. I don't know, maybe 1,800 men? or males anyway. And it's hard to tell, did more females as raw numbers survive or die? Can you tell? 
So is the size is the height of that green bar on the right, is it bigger or smaller than the height of the green bar on the left? It's hard to tell because they both don't start from the same place, so you can't see where they're going. Um, but you can definitely tell that a large percent of the females survived, whereas only a very small percent of the males did. We can also do a side-by-side -side bar chart, which is really similar. You can use the same data and just in software check side-by-side -side or you know, clustered or stacked, where we cluster the bars. So each cluster represents the levels of one variable or the possible categories of one variable. And then the individual bars in that cluster represent the other. Since each bar starts at zero on the y-axis, then it's easier to see and compare the number of observations and categories. So same data as before, but now you can see that the raw number of females who survived is very slightly smaller than the raw number of males. Because things aren't stacked. You lose some of the other information from the stack chart. You get kind of a different impression from each one, and that's what graphs are all about. Now, a standardized stacked bar, this is an interesting one, sometimes called a 100% stacked bar chart, is where you stretch each bar to be the same height as each other bar, and then you compare, compare proportions, relative proportions within groups. This is exactly like doing, say, a, a bar chart of only the row percentages or the column percentages. The disadvantage here is you lose information about the sample size in each group. And of course, you can, it can still be difficult to compare blocks because it's stacked. That is not standardized. Oh, now it's standardized. Go me. So in this case, you know, 73.2% of females survived and 21.2% of males. If you want a, a graphic representation of that, we can stretch the female bar so it's the same height as the male bar. And we can see that huge difference in percentages there. Here's more stacked bar charts. Passenger age. I think it's fairly sad that they only saved about half the children. Passage class. I guess you get what you pay for. You had about a two-thirds chance of being saved if you were in first class. And if you were in third class, maybe you had about a one in five chance of being saved on the crew. I guess they went down with the ship, largely. That sucks. So, that blows. You can make this 100% stack chart, so you can really see the differences in rates. First class, they got saved at very high rates. Third class and crew, not so much. Definitely a money effect going on here. So if you're going on Titanic, it paid to be rich and female. So maybe that unsinkable Molly Brown didn't survive so much by her wits as by her demographics. So bar charts and contingency tables. When you're analyzing two variables, you can just choose to analyze by row percents or column percents, and that gives you different results. It kind of implies a different kind of bar chart. So for instance, here's our party identification by Democrat, Republican, Independent, etc. If we have row percents, that naturally answers the question, what is the party identification of, and then you list the different categories of the sex variable. What, what's the distribution of party identification within males? What's the distribution of party identification within females? And so you've got your bars here. And so naturally what you're gonna to wanna to see is two bars, a male, a male bar and a female bar, 100% stacked or maybe not 100% stacked. So this isn't a fully stacked or standardized stacked bar chart, but you can definitely see the distribution here. 